Hello everyone, welcome to Midi Cuisine. Today we are going to talk about Parkinson Plus Syndromes. Parkinson Plus Syndromes. In the last video, we have discussed Parkinson disease in details and we have talked so much about Parkinson disease, the clinical features of Parkinson disease, investigations and diagnosis of Parkinson disease and the, and the medical management of Parkinson disease, which is so much important topic regarding understanding Parkinson's disease. So what is mean by Parkinson plus syndrome? A disease where the Parkinsonian features are accompanied by other neurological symptoms as well is called Parkinson plus syndrome. We will see in a few minutes that Parkinsonism will be accompanied by other neurological symptoms and Parkinson plus syndromes and the first Parkinson plus syndrome we will talk about is multiple system atrophy MSA in multiple system atrophy the Parkinsonism is accompanied by autonomic instability you know the hallmark symptom of autonomic instability is the orthostatic hypotension and there will be accompanying cerebellar symptoms as well like ataxia the classical cerebellar symptom ataxia where there is uh, where, where there is loss of coordination of uh, in the body movements so parkinsonism plus autonomic instability plus cerebellar symptoms this comprises the multiple system atrophy now you can see this you can see that the parkinsonism is accompanied by other neurological symptoms like autonomic instability like ataxia so therefore the multiple system atrophy is called Parkinson plus syndrome remember the multiple system atrophy was previously called Schrager syndrome Schrager syndrome Now, in multiple system atrophy, there are Parkinsonian features, autonomic instability and cerebellar symptoms with either Parkinsonian features or cerebellar symptoms predominating. So by these kinds of uh, things, we will get two different variants of MSA. If Parkinsonian features predominate the variant will be called MSA P, P for Parkinson. If cerebellar symptoms predominate, the variant will be called MSA C. And the MSA C was previously known as olive ponto cerebellar atrophy. Olive ponto cerebellar atrophy. Now, Multiple system atrophy is a less common disease, less common than Parkinson disease. And MSAP actually where the Parkinsonian features predominate as compared to cerebellar symptoms. This is very difficult to differentiate from Parkinson disease. But we can still differentiate it based on two things. Number one. In MSAP, the multiple system atrophy P, where the Parkinsonian features predominate, there is postural instability with early falls. Remember, in Parkinson disease, we uh, we have talked about this concept. In Parkinson disease, there is postural instability, but there is no history of early falls. There is no significant risk of early falls but as the Parkinson disease progresses and later stages of the disease when freezing develops the risk of falls increases but in MSAP there is risk of falls even in the early stages of the disease the second thing is there is lack of response to leaf dopa when a patient is presented to you with multiple system atrophy and you put this patient on leaf dopa there will be no response to leaf dopa so these two features 
will differentiate multiple system atrophy the p variant from the parkinson disease and don't forget that multiple system atrophy is a is an alpha synucleinopathy in the previous video i have told you about the three uh, alpha synucleinopathies the parkinson disease the multiple system atrophy and the levy body dementia the three important alpha synucleinopathies where alpha synuclein inclusions are shown to play its role in the pathophysiology of the disease regarding the management of multiple system atrophy it is said that it is symptomatic only there is no medicines available to change the course of this disease prognosis is poor then that of parkinson disease with less than 10 years of survival from the onset of symptoms remember that the survival 10 years survival is from the onset of symptoms not from the diagnosis and the best thing about multiple system atrophy is that cognition remains intact through the course of the disease the second parkinson plus syndrome we will talk about is progressive supranuclear palsy the psp and psp we have symmetrical parkinsonism plus cognitive impairment plus vertical gaze palsy plus bulbar symptoms the classical vertical gaze palsy which is the classical which is the hallmark symptom of psp which is actually the impairment of up and down gaze of the eyes may take years to emerge while the parkinsonism the cognitive impairment and bulbar symptoms may occur in the early stages of the disease the bulbar symptoms which arises uh, due to the bulbar palsy where there is paralysis of the muscles of articulation and swallowing there is uh, there is impaired articulation of speech so there, there is dysphonia and dysarthria there is uh, paralysis of the muscles of swallowing the swallowing reflexes are impaired so there is uh, a risk of aspiration pneumonia and there is drooling of saliva so all these symptoms are called bulbar symptoms which is associated with bulbar palsy so progressive supranuclear palsy has different pathological features than multiple system atrophy it is actually associated with abnormal accum accumulation of tau protein in the central nervous system so known as topathy it is not a synuclinopathy it is a topathy the survival rate is similar to multiple system atrophy and regarding the treatment there is currently there is currently no treatment available for psp even the parkinsonism doesn't respond to leave dopa the third parkinson plus syndrome we will talk about is cortico basal degeneration cortico basal degeneration it is less common than multiple system atrophy and psp the clinical manifestations are very variable and include parkinsonism dystonia myoclonus and alien limb syndrome alien limb phenomena where a limb usually an upper limb moves about and interferes with the other limb without apparent conscious control there is actually involuntary purposeless movements of the limb with the feeling of estrangement what is estrangement the patient feels that the limb that is moving around purposelessly doesn't belong to him or her anymore the cortical symptoms like dementia and apraxia which is inability to recognize objects and persons they are also common and sometimes these cortical symptoms are the only dominant symptoms in cortico basal degeneration and it is also a topathy similar to progressive supranuclear palsy the fourth parkinson plus syndrome we will talk about is huntington disease now you will say that okay huntington disease um, is a separate disease in which there are no parkinsonian features yes you are right there are no parkinsonian features in a typical huntington disease but there is a variant of huntington disease called westfall variant 
where the chorea is replaced by Parkinsonian features like akinesia and rigidity. So, I am talking about that very variant of Huntington disease, Westfall variant of Huntington disease, which is Parkinsonian features. So, it may be considered as the Parkinson plus syndrome, that very variant of Huntington disease I am talking about. So the Westfall variant of Huntington disease has juvenile onset. Usually the age of onset is less than 20 and less than 18 even. And interestingly, uh, sometimes this Westfall variant becomes very difficult to differentiate it from Parkinson's disease because it is symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease. About this, that how we will differentiate this Westfall vein from Parkinson disease. We have talked about this question in the previous video of Parkinson disease. So if you have not watched that video, go watch that video. The fifth Parkinson plus syndrome we will talk about is Wilson disease, which is an autosomal dominant disorder, a genetic disorder, uh, which is due to mutation in a gene called ATP7B due to which the copper metabolism becomes defective and copper starts depositing in the central nervous system. This manifests in various movement disorders like tremors, dystonia, ataxia and Parkinson's disease. So Wilson disease may have Parkinsonian features. So it can be regarded as Parkinson plus syndrome. Now, don't forget to exclude Wilson disease in a patient presenting with a movement disorder who is less than 50 years of age. Remember this. Here is the time for a fun question. What are the most common causes of death in Parkinson's disease? What are the most common causes of death in Parkinson's disease? The answer will be the most common cause of death in Parkinson's disease will be pneumonia. Specifically, aspiration pneumonia. And along with aspiration pneumonia, the other common cause of death in Parkinson's disease is falls, leading to injury related deaths. What happens in Parkinson's disease is bradykinesia, akinesia, the muscles responsible for the swallowing reflexes, they, be, they are affected. So the swallowing process becomes defective due to which there is a risk of aspiration pneumonia and the falls which leads to injury related deaths. So these are the two most common causes of deaths in Parkinson's disease patients.